Allison here at the Eager Free Public Library with your math library short. And this month we are going to have snow, much fun with geometry. So January is all about snow and we're gonna learn about geometry. I wonder if you know what geometry is. Well, if you don't, it's a type of mathematics that's all about shapes and figures. Um, it helps us learn about shapes, learn how to measure them, draw them, and compare them. So you might have started studying geometry in school, but if not, I bet you know a thing or two about shapes already. Um, it's a pretty cool field of math. It's something that a lot of people use in their jobs, people who design roads and bridges, people who plan space travel, all sorts of things. So it's pretty exciting, and hopefully you'll have some fun with these two activities. Our first activity is called symmetrical snowflakes, and it's thinking about the idea of symmetry, another vocabulary word. So do you know what symmetry means? It's when an object looks the same on one side as it does on the other side. So you may look at my face, and if you drew a line right down the middle, you'd see on each side I'd have an eye, half of a nose, half of a mouth, and an ear. So that's sort of the idea of symmetry. It's like a mirror image on each side. So snowflakes have symmetry in them, and we are gonna practice making some snowflake designs while thinking about the symmetry in them. So to start making your symmetrical snowflakes, you are going to need six Q-tips. So you'll start making your snowflake design by joining the six together in a pattern. And snowflakes all have six sides. It has something to do with the way that the water molecules, the H2O, one oxygen and two hydrogen, join together when they form snowflakes. So you'll have this hexagonal structure. And from there, you can do whatever you want. Um, playing with the symmetry means, remember, that the opposite sides are gonna look the same across the line of symmetry. So you can make your snowflakes as intricate and detailed as you want, or you can do them pretty simple. You can also cut some of your Q-tips in half or into smaller pieces to add some additional detail. Um, you'll need a nice strong scissors. They can be a little tricky to cut, but that can be a fun way to mix it up. You could also add in some of the marshmallows from our past, our next project, or anything else you have on hand that reminds you of snow. Um, if you like your designs, you can glue them down. If not, you can just keep playing and making different kinds of snowflakes. Another way you can play with these is by creating some puzzles for the people in your household. So here I've glued down half of a snowflake pattern, and the challenge is going to be to build the other half by following the pattern here and making a symmetrical side. So I'm gonna start with these big ones because I remember that these snowflakes all have six sides, so that's a good place to start. And then if I were to cut it along the center here, this is my line of symmetry, I need to fill in these two sides. So I see some half Q-tips right here with points coming off of them. So I'll add those in. And then, am I done? Looks like something's missing. I see some tiny little ones on the top of these here. So I will add those in. And, ta-da, I've solved the puzzle. So you can create these for each other. You can glue it down when you're done or just keep on playing. Our second activity this month is marshmallow snow forts. So you're gonna build your snow forts with marshmallows and toothpicks. And to build these, you're gonna to wanna to make some shapes, right? So you might start by making some two-dimensional shapes, like this one. I've got a triangle here. Two-dimensional means it just has two dimensions, like width and height. And then you might want to start building up into three-dimensional shapes, right? So that means it has three dimensions, width, height, and depth. So I started with a two-dimensional triangle, and then I built on top to create a three-dimensional pyramid. So I'm going to show you a mix of shapes you can make with your marshmallows and toothpicks. You might want to start by making a list of shapes and thinking about how you might make a triangle or square or rectangle. Um, a lot of those shapes make for strong bases with your structures, and then you can just keep building and building and building until you have the biggest snow fort. Um, you can do some challenges with these, like you could say, okay, we have five minutes, let's see who can build the tallest snow fort, or um, we have 25 toothpicks and 25 marshmallows, who can build the neatest thing with that? Um, come up with your own challenges or just 
use a whole bag of marshmallows and a whole thing of toothpicks and see how big you can make something. So I'm going to give you a little overview of some of the shapes to start with so that you can build some strong marshmallow snow forts. Here are some shapes that you can start with. You'll see a triangle up in the corner needs three toothpicks and three marshmallows. Maybe you'll make a square, a rectangle, a rhombus. Maybe you'll make some bigger shapes, a pentagon with five marshmallows and five toothpicks a hexagon with six of each, um, or maybe you'll make even bigger ones. So you could use these as the base of your snow forts, and then you can start building up. That's all for our January Library Short on math and snow. I hope you have fun building and making some snowy shapes at home. Thanks!